Let's get reaction tonight from House Oversight Committee Chairman Trey Gowdy, instrumental in getting those Comey memos released. He joins us live this evening from Greenville, South Carolina. Mr. Chairman, thanks for being here. Yes, sir. Thank you. I want to start by talking about the release of the memos, first of all. You have New York Congressman Jerry Nadler, uh, ranking member of the Judiciary Committee, saying this. The release of these memos under the threat of subpoena by the majority has accomplished little other than corroborating Mr. Comey's previous testimony. Your reaction to that? Uh, I read the memo six months ago. I think it's important for all members of Congress and ultimately the public to be able to see them. Uh, you can rest assured, Brett, if there was anything really, really important in these memos, the Democrats would have leaked what they read six months ago. I do think it's important that President Trump said, if any of my associates were involved in this collusion, I want to know it. I think it's really important that the Russia cloud the Democrats keep talking about was the salacious allegation of sexual misconduct. It was not the interference. And I think we've all learned a little bit more about Jim Comey as he goes on his morality tour uh, uh, over the next couple of weeks. Do you think he broke the law by leaking those memos? I have no way of knowing. And unlike Jim Comey, I don't compare people to, to, to mob bosses. I don't say they're unfit for office. I don't say they ought to be impeached. Uh, I, I trust Michael Horowitz. I think Michael Horowitz has done a fantastic job so far. That's the inspector general. Let's let him figure out which memos were given to the law professor and whether or not they can contain any classified information. But if they did, he would have broken the law. Not by the standard he set in the summer of 2016. I, God knows how hard it would be to win that case. Remember, he ignored the statute that said grossly negligent. He, ha he now has a requirement it has to be intentional and you have to do it to harm the United States. So under the standard he set in the summer of 2016 with Secretary Clinton, I don't think Jesus could win that case. <laughs> now, what are those other things struck you about these memos? There was one part in which he references CNN. I said media like CNN had them, the, the um, dossier he's talking about here, and we're looking for a news hook. I said it was important that we not give them the, the excuse to write that the FBI had the material, and that part is redacted, that we were keeping a very close hold. He said he couldn't believe that they hadn't gone with it. This is the president speaking. I said it was inflammatory stuff that they would get killed for reporting straight up from the source reports. I mean, it's important to point out that four, five days later, it's leaked to CNN that the president is briefed on this very thing. Yeah, I actually think Comey is right that that CNN was looking for the FBI to have that material so the story could then be the FBI's investigating it as, oppo as opposed to the underlying information. But what we've learned through this investigation is there were lots of people at DOJ and the FBI that were talking to the media, having unauthorized conversations, and we still want to know whether Brennan or Clapper, uh, both of whom knew about this, uh, one of whom was at the meeting, if not both, whether or not they could have been the source for CNN. With all of these interviews, as you've been watching them, I've been watching them, uh, Comey is going to be on here with me uh, Thursday. What, what strikes you about this and what he's talking about? Just the double standard, Brett. You know, when, when, when he was upset with President Trump, he leaked memos to spur special counsel. When he was upset with Loretta Lynch, nobody knew a word about it. Nobody knew that he didn't have confidence in Loretta Lynch. We just knew that he appropriated a decision away from himself. When, when President Trump asked, you know, go easy on Mike Flynn, he's a good guy. Uh, all of a sudden, that's an impeachable offense. When Barack Obama prejudges the outcome of the Hillary Clinton investigation or the IRS targeting scandal, somehow or another, that's okay. So the duplicity, the relativism, you know, Jim Comey said, I don't do sneaky things except uh, memorialize private conversations. I don't leak except when I do leak and I don't do weasel things. I think this whole book tour is a pretty weaselly thing, quite frankly. You wanted him back up on Capitol Hill uh, to answer questions. Um, what would you ask him? Um, well, I want Horowitz's report to come out first because I, I have a lot of confidence in Horowitz, and I want to know. I, I want to know a lot of things, but I really want to know in 2016 why they handled her Secretary Clinton's investigation in such an unprecedented way. And if he didn't make his mind up before uh, July, why in the world were they drafting an exoneration memo press release in May? So there are lots of questions that I have for him, uh, but I want Horowitz and Mueller to, to conclude their probes first. 
I think people are going to have confidence in the Mueller and Horowitz probes as opposed to Congress sometimes. But I would like to ask him more questions under oath. Do you have any sense of when those are going to wrap up, either the IG or Mueller? I would look for uh, Inspector General Horowitz to conclude sometime in May. I don't know that. He hasn't told me, and he would not tell me. But, but I, I, I think the natural rhythm is sometime in May with the McCabe part already coming out. With Mueller, I have no idea. I'm not supposed to know. And if anyone does know, um, shame on the Mueller team for leaking it. And I don't think they did. Finally, I want to get your reaction to this DNC lawsuit uh, that is moving forward as of today. Um, there are even some Democrats saying that it's, it's not the right move, but you've been looking at this stuff. There are a lot of investigations. What do you think of this move by the DNC? It's thin. <laughs> it's thin as a wafer. I mean, the better suit is Bernie Sanders suing the DNC for conspiring to give her the nomination. That would be a very interesting lawsuit. But there is no evidence of collusion. I, I know Adam Schiff wants there to be. I know how desperately he wants there to be. But there's just no evidence of collusion. So if they want to sue Russia, that's fine. I, I actually would prefer the indictments that Mueller has against them as opposed to a civil suit. If they're upset with WikiLeaks, so am I. Julian Assange, so am I. But there's no evidence of collusion. So this is either a fundraising ploy or, or, or it's an effort to get people in civil court where you can depose them. Um, so they can learn what Mueller's learning, and then they can use it for political purposes. Last thing, were you surprised that Rod Rosenstein told the president that he was not a target of the Cohen part of the investigation? I would be surprised if anyone uh, used that phraseology, um, because I don't know what it means. Now, I was only a prosecutor for two decades, Brett, so maybe I missed <laughs> something. but. But that can change in a nanosecond. All it takes is one more witness to say something. So I, I'd, I'd be shocked if Rosenstein said that. Um, I don't think the president is the target as you and I use that term in a non-legal sense. But in a legal sense, um, that can change with one witness, with one document. So you got to be careful giving people assurances until the end. And does he keep his job? I hope he does. I mean, I've had my differences with him, um, but, but I've got differences with, with lots of people, and I think they ought to keep their job. I, he's got a really tough job, um, but I've seen nothing in his handling of the probe. I mean, look, people are upset with the, with, with the scope and the breadth of the, of the Mueller investigation, and, and Rosenstein did draft that memo. But look, it's a really hard job to be the deputy attorney general. This is a really difficult environment in which to try to do that job. Um, and I, the president can get better advice than from me, but I would tell him to stick with the team he's got now. Mr. Chairman, we appreciate your time. Yes, sir. Thank you. Have a good weekend. You too.